Maine knows how. Brought to you by A&G Shooting, Modern Woodman of America, Mainly Handrails, Pine Grove Programs, Digital Spirit Media, and JW Parks Golf Course. Maine knows how. Welcome to the September edition of Maine Knows How. I'm I'm here today with uh, Bob Howe and Wyatt, as usual, and uh, we're coming up on a busy season, Bob. It is a busy season. October and September is, you know, hunting season's going, bear season's happening, and uh, there's a lot of scouting going on, and fishing season's just starting to turn on for the fall season, and the guys are chasing, they're getting their bird dogs going, and... Oh, well, yeah, it's very busy. A lot of bear. We're right in the middle of bear. Mm -hmm. We are. Yeah. We spent the last month getting everything set up and baiting and getting all the bait sites ready. And so we're pretty excited to get, get going with it. I, I wish people knew of the effort that goes into bear hunting. Mm -hmm. I mean, in August, right. um, it's, in it's July and 90 August. 90 degrees and you're hauling bait buckets and smelly bait buckets mm -hmm. you're and covered in bugs. sweet sugar and oh yeah it's there's so much work that goes down it's done before they even show up no and it, you don't you don't know if it's going to produce you yeah, know mm -hmm. but uh you do it and you go through it and uh as i think you said something really interesting a few minutes ago bob is that we're not we're not uh, giving bear hunts for we're giving the adventure exactly we're not promising you're going to get a bear because nobody can Right. I got a guide's patch, not a God's patch. <laughs> Sometimes you need that kind of help. And, but uh, it's like I said to, to some students that I, I, I know that uh, nobody gets into Harvard, but somebody does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing with bear hunting. Mm -hmm. And we have fishing. We do. Yeah, we're still fishing, still going on. Uh, it's getting a little bit better as time goes on because it was right. really hot. And now the water's starting to cool off a little bit, so the fishing's getting better. Boy, what a hot... I mean, the water temperature got warm this year. It did. In the lakes. Yeah, yeah, it was really, we didn't get a whole lot of rain for most of the summer. And it yep. was hot. And so a lot of those fish were down deeper. And now they're slowly coming back up where you can get to them. Yeah, um, I'm on Mesolonsky and uh, it's, the surface temperature is 80 degrees. Yeah. And, and there's nothing. No, nothing. they can't live there. No. So. But, uh, you know, we had the, we have the grandkids over. And we have a slope that goes away under, you know, on the, on the ground. Yeah. Away from the house. And in about 13 feet of water on the slope, mm -hmm. there's big bass. <laughs> you can only see them though when you're when you're swimming yeah. with your gut. Yeah. But they're there. Oh yeah, they're there. Now the getting to them with lure is the difficult part. Right, mm -hmm. right. And uh, we we want other fish besides bass. Well, though, anyway, but when there's nothing else biting, I'll take a bass. Any I'll day. take a bass any day. <laughs> That's right. Wow. So uh, we have deer season coming too. We do. And when, and when's that start, Bob? It starts on the 1st of November for rifle hunting. Right. And uh, most of our work we did over the winter time. While we're rabbit hunting, we are always continuously deer season. That's what we're deer hunters by trade. Right. And But we're not trackers. There's people that do that. Right. We take people that can't track. And there's a lot of them that can't track. And uh, we have a lot of stands and ground blinds and uh, huts we put out and trails that got to be cut and flagged in and flagged out and all that type of thing. And at that time, we take and still a lot of hunters with disabilities that the trails got to be clean and raked and so they can get in without falling down because you'll have a problem then. So mm -hmm. whatever we do, whenever we're doing this for the program, takes twice as long because of all the little details. Every little right. teeny stick can't be sticking up that much because that will trip somebody. You've right. got to cut them off close to the ground and lots yep. of stuff. Yeah, and just as a reminder to folks watching, again, uh, Pine Grove, Grove Programs uh, offers free outdoor adventures to veterans, first responders, and law enforcement officers. And uh, if it's something that you're interested in checking out, go to our website, uh, pinegroveprograms.org and you'll see uh, you'll have the ability to sign up for different activities mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's a we do it by a lottery system with the bear and the deer hunt because those things are are so incredibly popular yep. uh, but uh, go ahead and sign up now and uh, if you have any questions you can uh, mm -hmm. place them on the uh, the website or you can uh, give us a call 
Uh, but uh, again, I would really encourage you to check things out for the upcoming deer season. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But uh, we also have uh, some bird hunting coming up too. We, we do. We always have uh, uh, bird hunts. We have a David Jambatruzzi hunt. And uh, David is a longtime member of the program. And he puts together bird dogs and different people that come with their dogs to take veterans for a day or two of bird hunting. Mm. And uh, they go time, upland, upland bird hunting, and yep. at the same times, uh, we'll still take some rabbit hunters if we have too many. Right. So that's sort of fun for some of the guys. One year I had uh, uh, seven guys all hunting in wheelchairs, rabbit hunting, and we were trying <laughs> to chase these rabbits across the road. It was quite unique. <laughs> and right. so that'll be coming up next month in October. In October. October. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So were they? Did they have electric wheelchairs? Some did. Yeah. And some some had a. <laughs> Uh, our friend, uh, John Rackley, invented a chair called a Renegade chair, and it's a 10-speed wheelchair, and it runs off your arms, and you can shift it. No kidding. And it has uh, knobby tires. Right. It has a thing in the front where you can have a blind with a little roof on it, and they wheel these things up and down the trails. Right. Yeah, and it's been incredible. I brought a girl one time. It poured so hard. I never seen anybody stay out in there. She stayed there. Until she shot a rabbit, and she did. I got right. a picture of it, yeah. Well, you know, I, I would encourage anybody who um, is, has a little difficulty getting around, um, is uh, immobile, and it, you know, hunting used to be a passion, or just getting out into the woods used to be a passion, and you're afraid to do that right now. Uh, make sure when you check out our program uh, that you, you drop us a note. Uh, of of what the, your limitation is, and we, we will overcome that, mm -hmm. and we'll go out of our way to to make sure we get you out in the woods, and you can enjoy uh, mm -hmm. the great outdoors and the peace and serenity that comes from that, and yep. maybe even a big bang. Can't can't <laughs> tell, can't tell, but you'll have fun. Great. Yeah, we've had a lot of stories of taking a lot of people over so many years hmm. um, that happened to them, you know. So why with the fishing? When when the when is prime fall? I mean, later is better. Um, most of the streams and rivers are closed now. Okay. Uh, but the ponds and the lakes are still open. So. Um, so even into October. Well, only specific ones. Yeah. Uh, after you, September thirtieth or the end of September is uh, the end of the normal fishing season up here but specific ponds and lakes will still be open. So that's on a case by case basis. Right, mm -hmm. great. See these trout are spawning and stuff. That's why they closed a lot of the rivers and stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, it's a, it's a busy time of year. Very. Um, we, uh, we gear up the whole year for, for this season pretty much. We're, we're active all year long, but this is, the, yep. uh, this is no time to be jogging. This is our sprint season. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. So uh, please check us out and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Maine Knows How is brought to you by Modern Woodman of America, a member-owned fraternal financial services organization since 1883. And by Pine Grove Programs, supporting veterans, first responders, and law enforcement by providing free outdoor opportunities to those who serve, have served, and their families. A heartfelt thank you to Hawks Lobster in Harpswell, Maine, for their generous contribution to this year's Lobster Bake Fundraiser, benefiting Pine Grove programs. Your support is greatly appreciated. I encourage everyone to support those who back Pine Grove programs. Make sure to stop by Hawks Lobster in Harpswell, Maine. Once more, thank you, guys. Welcome back to Maine Knows How. Uh, this is our segment where we have a, a special guest. And uh, this, uh, this month, we're very happy to have Paul Reynolds, uh, who has a, a long and distinguished history and experience base uh, with uh, all things hunting in Maine. Um, he has a lot of credentials uh, to his name, but we're going to let him uh, uh, give us some of his background and uh, uh, touch upon his uh, magazine and radio show. Uh, and with that, uh, Paul and Bob, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll turn it over to you two. Right. 
Well, I'm not sure distinguished is the right <laughs> word. <clears throat> I've had a very checkered career, but a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun. Uh, Northwood Sporting Journal has been my baby since uh, 2000, no, since 2002, I think. 20 some, 25, 26 years we've been doing it and having a great time doing it. I mean, it's great to be able to go hunt and fish and then write about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing for 25 years and enjoying it very much. Uh, Northwood Sporting Journal is very big in New England, but we circulate all over the country. We have readers everywhere. But, but what a journal of your exploits. Thank you. To, I mean, yeah. to be able to do it and then write about it and look at it 15 years later. You bet. You know, and, what uh, a great... In fact, that's my wife on the cover there. Is that right? <laughs> that was taken quite a few years ago, 20 years ago. Just, just was... the copy we picked up that we have around the lodge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we have yeah. them around. We have them, we have we have them. them all over the yeah. place. Because all the hunters and fishermen like to read them. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, people who hunt and fish and also people who just enjoy other outdoor activities also. Right, you right. know, we have hiking riders mm -hmm. and kayak riders, so, yep. yep. Yep, You have some good writers. Thank you. We, yep. we try to... We try to keep our stable, and we've you know we we change a lot. Yep. Guys get older and quit, and uh, we bring on new people. But we try to keep a keep a good uh, good collection of writers. Yep. Yep. So so what got you uh, to the point, Paul, where you thought you would put together a ma a magazine? Uh, okay. Before the, the magazine, tell us about Paul. The way this started, <clears throat> my partner Vic Morin. Uh, back when I was with Fish and Wildlife, I was the information officer at Fish and Wildlife for mm -hmm. three years. And uh, at that time, I met Vic, and he, he, he had a fledgling publication, but he was having a struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And when I left Fish and Wildlife, I was fascinated by the potential that this had. And so he and I collaborated, and uh, we, we worked together on it. He's been in sales, and I've been the editor. And we've been a team for, as I said, a quarter of a century. So that's how it all started. So anybody who might be uh, interested in, in getting a copy, what's the best way for them to do that? Okay, you can pick it up at a newsstand near you. Uh, the best way to get one is get a mail subscription and uh, right. you save yourself a lot of money that way. Okay. Yeah. And tell us some of the exploits that we were referring to earlier today. Some of the places you've gone and things that you've done in the North Woods. Okay. And what is uh, the North Woods? <laughs> yeah. Well, the North Woods covers a big swath, as you know, as yep. you all know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been an avid deer hunter all my life. I started as a kid with my dad. It's my favorite passion, but I also do, I love to fish, fly fish. But uh, hunting is my thing, and I've deer hunted all over Maine, Maryland. And uh, late in life, I started elk hunting in Colorado. <laughs> Oh, wow. And that became an addiction. Yep. <laughs> and, and my wife decided I was spending too much money. So I stopped doing that. Yep. You know about that, right? I know about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I love to hunt. It's my thing. Yep. Yeah. And I and, still love it even at my advanced age. I still like to get out in the woods and I still have that passion, you know, to mm -hmm. hunt the whitetail. And the North Woods are ma massive. I mean, it's it's just so... To get out here into the woods of, of Maine and Western Maine and Northern area, uh, it, it's amazing how big. I had the uh, the real pleasure of taking a helicopter ride in foliage season, mm -hmm. uh, and we were flying just above treetop. Oh yeah, and you could. Yeah, we were we were spotting yeah. down and we were seeing all kinds of wildlife, yeah. but it's just a massive forest. Yeah, well, Maine is, Maine is blessed. I mean, if, mm -hmm. if you say, if you fly over Northern Maine, it's just a sea of fur thickets. I mean, yeah. we have a, we, we're blessed to have the Northwoods and we're blessed to have access to it. That's Absolutely. what's so great. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't I mean, something uh, special, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You it's, spend a lifetime. You bet. And just hunt on oh, yeah. all this land. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I understand that in addition to uh, the magazine, you uh, you also have a radio show. I do have a radio program called Maine Outdoors. And uh, the reason I got into radio instead of TV is because my wife said I had a face for radio. <laughs> and so I've been, <laughs> been, been broadcasting. Maine Outdoors has been on the air again for over a quarter of a century. And we're on every Sunday night from 7 to 8. And uh, like you folks, we try to have guests. <laughs> Uh, people who fish and hunt or guide and talk about the things they do. The radio station? 
uh, radio stations, WVOM FM, and it's a statewide network, right. Voice of Maine network. 101.3 and 103.9. Excellent. Or... Thank you. I listen yeah. every morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we, uh, we've we been doing that for a number of years and enjoy it. Uh, trying to find guests is always a challenge, but we always manage to find somebody to right. come on the radio. Yeah. So uh, with with your... How many decades of experience would you say you have in the whole outdoors uh, experience? Well, I'm 84 years old last week. Wow. All right. And I've been hunting and fishing since I was 15. Okay. So I've got a few years. A yeah. few years under, in. Under my mm-hmm. belt. Yeah. You know, ha- have you seen it change over the oh, years? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure even you remember back when uh, in the days before Hunter Orange. Mm-hmm. We had uh, we wore the black check black and red checkered shirts. Absolutely. And uh, and of course we had some problems with hunting fatalities. Yep. Back in those days, so thankfully that has changed, revolutionized by Hunter Orange, I think. Very but much. Uh, back in those days, I think there was a lot more accessibility. There wasn't all the posted land that we have today, mm. and I think that's one of the concerns for the future. Uh, m- perhaps not up here in the North Woods where you folks are. Mm-hmm. But down where I live in Ellsworth, and just um, in the last 10 years, I've seen a massive increase in posted land, which discourages hunters. I know much. people have just given it up because they can't find a place to hunt. And uh, it's something we have to deal with, I think. Mm-hmm. Really, it's a concern. Paul, you also man- uh, mentioned uh, a few minutes ago about safety concerns and blinds. Hunting from a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, hunting from a tree, stand? a tree stand. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I still bow hunt from a tree stand and it makes my wife very nervous because of my advanced age. But I have a, a complete body safety harness, mm-hmm. which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yep. And I wear it religiously. I'm very careful. I focus when I climb up the tree and I focus when I climb down the tree. Mm-hmm. And I hook myself up to the tree on a harness and, uh, I don't, I don't know how many years I have left to climb that tree, but I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a significant injury rate. Yeah, I was reading the other day that uh, I think I read somewhere that in a lifetime, two, one out of three tree stand hunters will fall out of a tree. Wow. And uh, sometimes it causes death, sometimes serious injury. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, one of the things I've always wondered about is if you do fall off the tree stand and you're hanging from a harness, mm-hmm. can you get back in that tree stand? And somebody suggested that you should rehearse at a at a, at a low level. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So I haven't done that yet, but I think maybe this time I'll I'll try it at a low level and see if I can get back in the tree stand. It's difficult to do. Do you know? I do. Have you fallen? I have. Have you really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I never have, but it must be tough to get back up there. My friend Andy Kohler fell out of one. That is a story that's unbelievable. Is that right? <laughs> oh, God Almighty. It's unbelievable yeah. what happened to him. Yeah, yeah I bet. And sometimes yeah. Is that what happened to his face? I'm not going there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, he fell out of a stand, and it was... And I have a lot of funny stories. That yeah. Out of I like ground blinds, too. What I like about a ground blind is you can you can nod off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's much easier taking that. You can't do that in a tree stand. No, no. But the equipment has changed oh, so, it has much. so much. And the stands yeah. have changed from yeah. when they first came out. They oh, were yeah. a little on the rickety, rickety side. Oh yeah. Now they're pretty yeah. rugged and they, they yeah. work. And out they well. were always very difficult to put up. Those ground blinds are so complicated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now they've revolutionized them. A lot more user friendly. Yep. Yeah. 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 We use a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. We like to keep guys on the ground. Well, it's a lot safer, that's yep. for sure. Mm-hmm. My job yeah. is a guide to send them home. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean I have to send them home with a deer. Or a <laughs> yeah. I have to send them home. That's my that's job. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, Paul, as, as we move forward here, now we're uh, advancing through time and space. You've already mentioned the, um, the restricted restrictiveness of, of land with people posting. What, what other challenges are, are you seeing that lie ahead uh, for the sportsmen? Well, I think there are a number. I think posted land is a big one. Uh, the other issue is really something we've seen this year with gun regulation. Mm. I mean, guns are part of hunting. And uh, now we have a, what is it, a 72-hour 72 mm-hmm. wait. waiting law. Mm-hmm. So if you buy, if you're going to, if you, if you go to Old Town Trading Post and you buy a bear gun, 
uh, you, and you're from Holton, you got to drive b back to Holton and then drive back. It's mm. going to discourage people from uh, from patronizing some of these stores, I'm afraid. And uh, I think the gun issue is, uh, with all of the violence that's happened in this country, I think we're going to have a struggle to maintain our gun rights as hunters. Mm. I think that's going to loom as a big, big issue in the next decade. You know, Paul, I think you're you're right. And I, I think the, the big issue that we as a society have to come to, to terms with is I've made it a point over the past 10 plus years with every one of these shootings and things along that line to keep reading in the storyline. And I have to admit, with the exception of maybe one Every single case has involved significant mental health problems. Oh, yeah. For and sure. uh, problems that people around them knew about. And um, we, we've got to come up with a way to understand the, the connection between mental health problems and having a gun and how best to deal with that. Um, and it won't be easy because no. we, we, we have a long history, especially in Maine. Yeah. I mean, every, there are more guns in Maine than people. There are, and uh, and Maine has a pretty good record. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. uh, the other issue that, that I think looms big on the horizon is the idea that, um, that uh, young people are not being brought along yes. the way we were. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see fewer and fewer. You know, if you go to a fishing game club anywhere in Maine, it could be in Belgrade, it could be yeah. in Augusta, Ellsworth. And I go to these fish and game clubs sometimes to speak <laughs> and uh, just to rub elbows with folks. And you're not seeing young people in these fish and game clubs. Mm -hmm. They're old guys with gray beards. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, that's a concern because uh, if we're going to continue the, the heritage, we've got to get these young people interested in, in hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are a lot of uh, competitions with young people with video games and iPhones. And yep. so... Uh, we really need to concentrate on getting young people involved in the outdoors. Yeah, so, I've I've noticed just on on the lakes with ice fishing, the lakes that used to have dozens of shacks, you see very few of them now. Yeah, and there's just not a whole lot of people getting out. Yeah, yeah. So it is a it's an issue, and if you run an outdoor publication like I do, I mean you're concerned about your future subscribers too. Sure. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and you know, the sad thing is, is, uh, uh, a young person who, in my opinion, and I'm sure you folks would agree with this, that if a young person is never exposed to the outdoors, hunting and fishing, camping, whatever, they've missed so much in their life. And if you're a person like we are, who loves it, yep. you feel badly that these young people are not going to have the opportunities that we had. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, that's a sad thing. It's also one of those things that if you don't grow up doing it or you haven't done it when you're young, you when you get to thirty or like older, yeah, how do you start that journey if you don't know where to go, exactly. what things you need, how to how to do any of the little things? Yeah, you bet. And um, so it's important to get those people out, those kids out early. And get them used to and learning those little skills and how to where to go, where to yeah. how to go fishing, how to go yeah. ice fishing, what you need. Yeah. Um, where I bring some of my friends who aren't as outdoors oriented, and they show up in in jeans and a and a little windbreaker to go ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Come with me. Talk. We yeah. got we got yeah. stuff. You know, when my uh, I have two boys, both of whom love to hunt and fish, and my oldest boy. When he was four years old, I took him out of preschool to take him ice fishing, mm -hmm. and I put him in a, in a, I had an ash basket, a, mm -hmm. in a pack basket, put him in the pass, pack basket, carried him into this little pickerel pond, and we did, we did a little ice fishing, cooked some hot dogs on the open fire, yep. and he remembers that to this day. No kidding. Mm -hmm. You know? I and know. It, it, it fired him up. Yeah. And that's how you get kids started. And, uh. I just feel badly that this isn't happening as often today. That's true. This is what happened to him. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> we carried him what? rabbit hunting on snowshoes. Oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. We carried him fly fishing. And yeah. Leaders, I'd be fly fishing. He'd be in the bag watching. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how it I, all I'm starts. Seeing, I'm seeing a lot uh, younger folks doing a lot more hiking. 
That seems to be one yep. of the outdoor activities yep. of choice. And yep. um, that doesn't come without its logistical issues, too. That's I mean, right. You, you've got to have somebody in the group that has some experience you bet. Uh, with it. Yep. But, you know, I do have hopes that, you know, people like Wyatt, the young people like Wyatt, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, share their outdoor enthusiasm with people who haven't had those opportunities yeah. and yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are just willing to do something different yeah. and disconnect. And for, the, the good demographic, you probably already know this, but the good demographic is that more and more women yes. are taking up hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the, uh, I think Mark Laddie told me at the Fish and Wildlife Department, that's one of the things that's kept the the numbers up on really? on licenses is uh, more and more women take taking to hunting. Yeah, yeah. My, I think last year we brought twenty nine fathers and sons or grandfathers and sons rabbit hunting. Did you really? Yeah, almost every year it's over twenty. Good for you. And yeah. because they did it when they, they enjoyed it and had a good time, and then they brought them. Yeah. Some of them never seen snow. <laughs> yeah. Never walked on snowshoes. Yeah. <laughs> what never an experience been, that would be. Never for them. been hunting. Yeah. Wow. And came with his grandfather. Yeah. And now they want to come all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's great. So wonderful it, thing you do, by the way. Well, it takes You're, every you, hunter, yeah. like you and me yeah. and him and him, to bring these numbers up. You bet. Yeah. 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 My, uh, it's funny you should mention women. My my daughter, um, and her husband are are big outdoors people with hunting and everything. And uh, they're two kids. I mean, they'll go hunting together as a family and it's, they're not yeah. leaving anybody at home. I mean, the four of them will get up and they'll go. And um, for the, when the boys were younger, they, they would just assist and watch. Yeah. Uh, but over a two or three year period, they would break them into, you know, learning how to shoot and do those yeah. things. And, you know, both the uh, both boys, uh, they're eight and ten now, and they've each shot a couple deer each. And you know, my daughter and my my son in law. Mm -hmm. um, it is a it's a for them. It's their adventure. Yeah, my wife, a lady on the cover there, she retired as a teacher at fifty two and had never hunted. Mm -hmm. And she wow. informed me one day that I want to learn to hunt. Good. And so I said, <laughs> great. Yeah. So I brought her along, and uh, she's hunted. Uh, she's killed moose, bear. Deer, elk, grouse. I mean, she's done it all. Yeah. Wow. And the bear. And uh, her favorite, her very favorite, was always the bear hunts. Yeah. Of all the different hunts. Yeah. She loved the excitement of the bear hunt. Yeah. You know, the uh, the anticipation of yeah. seeing a bear was yeah. something. Yeah. I had guys that came for 37 years in a row. Wow. Bear hunting. Is that right? And Good. he eventually just couldn't walk anymore. Yeah. We had to walk him in and walk him out. And he still wanted it. We finally said, Raymond, you can't do this no more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes a time. Yeah. You know. Have, have Paul, have you seen any changes in the, the health of the herds, whether it be bear or deer or even of uh, the different species of fish? Um, well, we know we know the bear population is uh, is very healthy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I guess for a number of years, the department was concerned that they weren't harvesting enough bears. Right. Although I talked to uh, Jennifer Vachon the other day, and she said that's pretty well leveled off. Mm -hmm. And now they, they've got a good harvest, and uh, they're not as concerned about a, an overabundance of black bears as they were. Okay. Um, and I think I've, I've watched the white-tailed white -tailed deer population increase along the coast, in southern Maine and the coastal islands. But we've had a problem with uh, deer in the in the in the big woods, mm -hmm. and uh, coyotes I think have been part of the issue. Yes. And uh, deer winning areas have been part of the issue. So good things are happening now. We're mm -hmm. we're controlling coyote populations. Right. The department is now buying up deer wintering areas, which yeah. is a good thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, good things are happening. The, I think for the, the for famous the, deer yards that, yeah. that I always heard so much oh, about, yeah. it, but never saw. Never saw one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think that's a good thing. Yeah. It's uh, It's been a slow process for them. Uh, the commissioner wrote a good article in Sam News that I read the other day that uh, there's a challenge trying to find landowners who will sell them or deer else? wintering areas. This is the biggest challenge. Yep. They have the money, but right. trying to trying to find a willing seller <laughs> has been a challenge for them. Yeah. Mm. Yep. The, uh, the moose 
population. I mean, I, I remember when moose hunting first started, mm -hmm. the success rate was oh, yeah. like 99%. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I understand now it's it's dropped below fifty. Yeah, fifty percent. Well, I think I mean, you you probably agree with this. I don't know, but the, I think the moose are getting smarter. Yeah, don't you? They are, and there's lots yeah. of them. Yeah, in some places they brought the numbers up so they control, try to control the tick population, yeah. and that it's not as many. But uh, Wyatt spent all summer doing moose safaris and bringing people from all over the world. To look for these animals. Oh, did you? Yeah. And he, yeah. Uh, I think, out of the whole summer, only once he didn't find moose. Oh, is that right? So that's yeah. It's sometimes two trips a day. Yeah. Well, the you moose have to know where to look. The moose <laughs> biologist says you, if 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 the success rate is down, it's because hunters aren't getting out of the trucks and getting into the woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> part of the problem. Yeah, you can find a moose if you're willing to work for it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. We yeah. spent a lot of time yeah. scouting and yeah. building little blinds on remote. Remote, remote ponds. Yeah. So we can get yeah. these people's pictures of yeah. Uh, moose. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. But he's done a great job doing yeah, that. Yeah, they yeah. have. Yeah. What? Well, anything about fishing? How uh, how that's been going well, in general? Well, I'm a, you know, I've done all kinds of fishing. I used to troll for togue with my dad, who loved to do it. But I'm a fly fisherman mostly now. Yeah. And one of the things that amazes me, I have a little secret pond I go to way up north. I can't tell you, mm -hmm. can't tell you where it is. <laughs> but I've been going there for like 50 years. And I took my son up there again this year. And the fishing was incredible. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, Scotty, you know, this is what's so amazing is that we, it's a, it, the fishing is as good on this pond today as it was 50 years ago. Right. right. Yeah. And it's not stocked, it's a wild pond. Mm -hmm. yep. and, uh, and there are a lot of ponds like that in Maine. It, Maine is blessed with a tremendous trout fishery. It's yeah. just a, yeah. it's a treasure trove. It's world class. And, uh, and they've done a good job with the heritage waters trying yep. to protect it. And uh, yep. it's just, a, it's a real blessing, I think, the, the trout fishery we have in Maine. So what can we do to get rid of those black flies when the fly fishing's great in the spring? <laughs> Well, the, I, there is a simple, simple solution, and that's called a big cigar. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, they're awful, aren't they? I, I never it's terrible. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's part of it. It yeah. is just part of it. And the other thing is that old woodsman fly dope. Have you ever oh, used that? That used to be really bad. I don't Isn't know that how stuff it is bad? Now. Yeah. They're still making that in yep. uh, in Searsport, Maine. Yeah, huh? yeah they're still no, bottling yeah. it. Wow. You foul, smell foul it. smelling. <laughs> Three days later, you put it on. You can still smell oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's great. Wow. Yeah. That's well, that, that's, uh, you know, I, I, I would love to have, you know, to, to hear more stories or whatever um, you have to share. Um, but, I mean, it's 70 years in the woods. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've done it all. I've been lost. Uh, spent a night in the woods, uh, um, but I've just had I've just had a wonderful wonderful experience yeah. uh, hunting deer and bear and elk. Yeah. So when you, when you got lost and you spent the night in the woods, was it just a matter of direction? Did you have a compass or? It's the old story about. Um, have you ever heard of Orson Bog? Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. it's a beast. It is <laughs> because you can you can know which compass heading to go up to get yourself out, but you get trapped in these little labyrinths ah. of water where you can't get around it. And it was one of those situations. It, one of those you you can't get there from here. Yeah, yeah. Things <laughs> and and when when nightfall comes, yeah, it's no. You got to sit down and start a fire and. Wait it out because you can't go through the woods in the dark. Right. And this yeah. was before phones. Uh, yeah. 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 So your yeah. wife must have been yeah. very happy. Yeah. <laughs> My, uh, we had a, a lost situation two falls ago. We have a group that go to deer camp every fall, and uh, one of the fellows, uh, we all were hunting, and they came. He came out and crossed over the road he was supposed to come out on. Yeah. And. At dark, we couldn't find him, and we called and called and called, and uh, eventually, the wind was blowing. It was a cold night, and we knew where he was. We thought, and then we heard a shot, 
and the shots kept getting, getting farther away. Oh, yeah. No. So we, he was going in the wrong direction. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we put a call into the main warden service, but luckily my son went in the dark and, and found this, uh, wow. our fellow hunter. Sometimes the best and, thing you can do is what you've already said is just sit down and make a fire. Oh, you have to. Yes. Yeah. And he didn't do that. Yeah. He uh, he panicked, and uh, he's lucky he 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 didn't get hurt. Yeah. He got out okay. Yeah. And everything ended well. But you got to be careful. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So. So, Paul, I mean, we're talking a little bit about fishing here, and, you know, you won't tell us where your fishing hole is. And I don't know why fishermen are like that. It's very selfish for well, you not, not to share. Well, not only that, some of them lie. I don't lie. I just refuse <laughs> I to lie. answer the question. <laughs> Good. It's, uh, it's the truth, though. Uh, you heard the old, the old joke about you can, how can you tell if a fisherman's lying? His lips are moving. Lips are moving. <laughs> yeah. I heard the same thing about lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I the, heard it's true with politicians too. <laughs> politicians too. Yeah. And guides. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think we say it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. But but fishing is getting really complicated these days. It is. And and on my radio program, uh one of the things that gets people uh, fired up is a discussion of fishing regulations. Right. And generally, they're not all people, but a lot of people complain that they're unnecessarily complicated. And I understand biologists are trying to fine tune fisheries management, mm -hmm. and you understand that, but you, you wonder where the fine line is between micromanaging the fishery yeah. and making it fun and uncomplicated for the fishermen. And one of the biggest complaints I hear about are the so-called slot limits. This drives, people I know, drive them crazy. Right. Uh, in fact, my late co-host, Wiggy Robinson, that was his cause celeb in his life. Mm -hmm. You remember Wiggy. Mm -hmm. He hated the slot limits. Mm -hmm. And he was an avid fisherman, and he cared about the resource, but he always claimed that they were unnecessary and that they didn't solve the problem because when you catch a trout and put it back, half the time it's going to die anyway. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I have no scientific knowledge or background, so I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that people are discouraged uh, and don't buy fishing licenses because they get fed up with the com complex regulations. Well, it, mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you want to be doing it the right way, you you, you get your, li your license and then you go online and you can actually go to the lake that you want to go fishing on. And there's two pages of, of rules. Yeah. You can keep one of these that has to be that long. It can't be more than this. And you can't have more than this and that it's really, I mean, you have to put in research to figure out what you have to do to remain within the confines of the law. And right. it's hard. Mm -hmm. I think that I I could be wrong on this, but I think the department's getting the message. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think there have been some changes this year that come out of the category of uncomplicating the fishing regulations. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe great. there's hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe there's hope. They've got better. Well, I think so. They're working on them. I think they there's, are. The Maine has a lot of different kinds of waters. They do, and it's hard to say do this and yeah. do that. And yeah, I know exactly how they feel because I do it too. Is so much that we don't kill no fish. That's right. We throw them all back. Yeah. Right. But then, well, even then, you still don't know on this side of the red post or that side of the red yeah, post. Well, right. Yeah. Well, geez, I'm crying. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, fishing is that important uh, sport that I think is should be the easiest one to get our kids involved in. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. You're not giving them a deadly weapon. You know, you're yeah. not taking them out and shooting something. Yeah, yeah. But fishing is an easy thing. And and Bob, you know, we were talking a few minutes ago about how do we pass the baton? Mm -hmm. and how do we get the uh, younger generations? I'll pose it to both of you. How do we get, the, what's the best way to get the, those younger generations into the outdoors? I would say if you do not have the ability with an uncle, a father, or a grandfather, then join Sam. They have... Children's Sportsman, program, Sportsman. Sportsman's Alliance of Maine, yep. join, their pro, join their program. They have trout ponds on their property. They have kids' days. And they have people that will take their kids and teach them. And also the 4-H club and um, 
There's a camp over there. Uh, what the heck was the name of it here? Bryant Pond. Pond. Bryant Pond. Yeah. And they have an excellent They pond. do, yeah. I sent every yeah. one of my kids to that. They do, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they, they learn to shoot. Yeah. They learn to hike. They learn to walk. They learn to kayak. Oh, they yeah. So many things. Yeah. yeah. So they're really great programs. Yeah. That, yeah it's really yeah. cheap money to yeah. do it. Yeah. One of the, one of the uh, this is kind of a an aside, but one of the things that, Scouting was something that was very important in my life and my kids' boys' life, and uh, they learned a lot about yeah. you know camping and and woodcraft, and uh, scouting is just not what it was when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and and I lament that because I think that's a great way to get kids interested Absolutely. in camping and the outdoors, yeah. um, and that's a tough one. I mean, how do you if if you're say you're a, a single parent, a mother with a young boy who says, gee, mom, I'd like to hunt. I'd like to learn how to hunt. Where do you go? What do you yeah, do? Right. Mm -hmm. Those are good questions. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, maybe those of us who have the time ought to let people know. I've told, I've told mothers on the radio, have your son get in touch with me and I'll take him mm -hmm. hunting or fishing. Sure. And they've never taken me up on it, yeah. but I, I was sincere about it. Yeah. Uh, but we all have to step forward and, and mm -hmm. try to find out if there are youngsters who have an appetite and, and help them help bring them along I think mm -hmm. yeah especially with with fishing I think the uh, just the opportunity to have conversation when you're fishing right is is really a, a positive yeah, yeah. Uh, thing and you can have you can make a mark on yeah. on people's lives oh, yeah. just through the conversation that you the, the idle chat chatter yeah. Well, Paul, I, I really want to uh, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you. I and, uh, enjoyed real, it. Real treat to have you here. Yeah. And uh, really, uh, we uh, keep uh, putting out the uh, Northwoods Sporting Journal. We really appreciate that mm -hmm. and uh, look forward to hearing you on your radio show for years to right. come. Thank you. So, yeah. Appreciate right. the opportunity. Thanks thank for having me. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Okay. Come again. You bet. Love to. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear how you made out deer season this okay. year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us about the harness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Great. Uh, with that, we'll be back in a few minutes. Maine Knows How is brought to you by J.W. Parks Golf Course in Pittsfield, a nine-hole facility with a full-service pro shop and driving range offering daily fee golf and membership opportunities. And by A&G Shooting, a brick-and-mortar gun shop offering firearms training and 100% customer satisfaction. And by Digital Spirit Media, providing over 30 years of technical expertise in media production and event production services. Welcome back to Maine Knows How. Uh, this is the uh, time of the show where we force Wyatt <laughs> to actually speak. Uh, mm -hmm. So he has uh, our how-to tip for the, for the month. Yeah, so this month's how-to is all about getting your deer stands ready. And a lot of people, even though they'd like to do it earlier, um, they get pushed back and they end up cutting a lot of their shooting lanes or trails and stuff in November. And what happens then is all of those freshly cut trees and branches and stuff that you've broken off, they put a lot of scent into the air that isn't natural. And so my, the how-to for this month is really to focus on getting all of your stands and stuff ready before the season starts. September, even earlier, is better. And that allows all of those, those uh, branches and stuff. And like, if you move any, like if you sweep any trees out of the way, mm. it's fresh earth underneath. Those are all scents that aren't natural. And so by moving those earlier in the season, it allows it to diminish in the scent and you can have a more natural and a better chance of being successful at those deer stands. Excellent. Yeah. Do you uh, recommend that uh, when folks go out to clear their site, so to speak, mm -hmm. that they take extra precautions with, with smells they'll be carrying or do those smells dissipate real quick? Well, quickly? if it's early enough, then they'll, they'll dissipate. Just dissipate. Yep. Well, great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Wyatt. You're welcome. And, uh, you know, I was talking a few minutes ago about bear hunting season coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know anybody who might have a, a bear story? Ah, uh, you know, I mean, I've heard plenty of bear stories. <laughs> Half of them no, aren't true. true. <laughs> oh, true? I don't know. Um, but I think I know someone who might have one. Ah. Yeah. And who might that be, Papa? 
How? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I've uh, so many years taking bear hunters, stuff happens. <laughs> and it just happens. And a lot of unique things have happened in the woods. And um, so I'm going to share one with you. And this is a pretty funny story, but could be pretty serious, too. Depends on where you was. <laughs> and um, I had a gentleman come. And he was hunting with his new black powder rifle, bear hunting. He said, I want to shoot a big bear, Bob. And I said, everybody here does too. So I'll put you on a bay, hope a big bear comes, but I can't tell you what's going to come. But the bait's been hit every day. He said, all right, that's good enough. So I put him in a stand. And we walked in and I baited it. And he got in the stand, and I come back and asked him if he's all right. Yeah, I'm all ready. It's all right, I'll be back. So I went to put out the other hunters. I had five guys, and they're spread basically a mile apart. Geez, some time went by, and time went by. And I heard somebody shoot. Well, he didn't shoot. I heard, so I went over there to see if my other hunter shot. And he didn't. He said, I don't know who else shot, because there's other people that bait in the areas too. But I thought it was from one of these guys, but it wasn't. So we started picking guys up. It got dark. And this, when I got to this gentleman, he was way down the road, like a mile. I said, geez, I'm 20. What are you doing down here? He goes, well, I got a story to tell you. He goes, I was sitting there, and then I was sort of taking a nap. He says, and I had my head down, and I looked up, and there was a bear on the bait. And I mean a big bear, Bob. He was big, he says. And I'm saying, yeah, all right, they're all big. But I'm telling you, I got my gun up, I put it on him, a squeeze, just the primal went off, and the bear went Looked right at him. He said, uh-oh, <laughs> because he only had one shot in the gun. Oh. He said, my heart dropped. He goes, the bear turned and came walking right towards me. <laughs> right? He says, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I, did, I was like, should I climb this tree? Should I run? Or what? <laughs> goes, Finally, the bear walked just off to the side of the trail and walked off. Because I didn't dare to get down, and I was listening. I was listening. He said, I hear something over here. I hear something over there. <laughs> I was scared to death. <laughs> and it's getting darker, right? He says, finally, I didn't hear nothing, so I climbed down real slow, and I looked around. I walked out that trail. And when I got to that road, I ran down the road. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the gun didn't go off. No, it didn't go off. So we looked at it when we got back to the lodge, and we took the nipple off, and it was all clogged up in there where he had shot it before, but didn't uh, clean it. The carbon buildup or right. whatever it is. So he said, do you have a gun I can borrow? <laughs> I said, I'll let you borrow a gun. I'm going back to that bait tomorrow if you give me a gun. I'm not using this no more. So all right. So I gave him a gun. Son of a gun. He said, I want that big bear. That was a big bear. He had a head like this, he said. So a couple hours went by. And I heard another gunshot. So I said, I think that's back where he was. So I drove back. It was probably 20 minutes before I got there. So I go in, and he's halfway out the trail again. He says, a bear came in, Bob. It, 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 it wasn't the big one, he says, but it was a nice one. I said, all right. So where'd it go? He said, Did it drop? No, it ran off. So well, let's go look for it. You go look for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guide. Yeah. You you get paid to sacrifice. <laughs> so I said, all right, we'll go see if we can find him. Which way was he going? And I asked all the questions. You stay right here. All right. So I start tracking this band. I find a little blood trail. And geez, I get there and it starts bleeding. And I'm looking on a little rise and I see black. And it was like a bear laying dead. And I'm looking it over, and I was in no, no hurry. 
So I walk up to the bear. That son of a gun, that big bear had came and ate that bear. In that 20 minutes, he was ripped from here all the way here. All the innards pulled out of him. <laughs> I said, come on in here. I want to show you something. No <laughs> kidding. He said, why? I said, there's your bear. My bear wasn't like that. I said, I know, but you know that big bear you missed? Well, that's what he ate him. And that Don't do minutes, that? He did. He did. So I'm going to show you some pictures of that bear. <laughs> yep. So he had a bear, but he, he couldn't have a full body mount no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so stuff happens. Uh, getting... Getting so, two shots in two days is yeah, yeah, and I said, no more napping on the baits. Huh? He said, no, I never nap again. <laughs> so that's just one of the things that happened. One of the stories. One, yeah. And I'm gonna put you on notice right now. You're gonna need a deer story next month. A deer story? Yes. Oh. Because we're coming up on that. Yeah, we have some deer stories. I have some funny deer stories. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. You know, stuff happens in the woods. Yes. You never know what's going to happen. And it doesn't necessarily stay there. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Son of a Sometimes guy. it leaks out. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Bob, Wyatt, thanks. I think uh, it was another uh, a good good it's time uh, sharing some stories and learning some information from Paul. And mm -hmm. He's a nice just, gentleman. Yeah, really came. nice. Yep. Really look forward to, to listening to his program on Sunday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, we'll sign off from Maine Knows How, and uh, we'll be back with you next month. Thanks. Maine Knows How, brought to you by A&G Shooting, Modern Woodman of America, Mainly Handrails, Pine Grove Programs, and JW Parks Golf Course, Digital Spirit Media, Maine knows how.